With the newly released Raspberry Pi 2, I can finally control my LED matrix through Gladiator with a great frame rate. The old Raspberry Pi B Plus on the other hand, did not have enough horsepower to do the job. Well, at least not enough power to run the program perfectly smooth. But there are also other, powerful single board computers out there, which can handle this task without a problem. Like the Banana Pro, which is an enhancement of the Banana Pi, which I presented you in a previous Versus video. Or the Orange Pi, which is a completely new challenger from China. And yes I know, the names become more and more ridiculous. Nevertheless, let's find out which of those three boards has the best price performance ratio and which one you should get for your project. I think it is easy to see that the Raspberry Pi 2 is the smallest of those three boards. The banana is just a tiny bit bigger and the orange is actually quite huge in comparison. The quality of the raspberry and banana board is in one word, flawless. There is nothing to criticize. But the orange on the other hand just looks a bit dirty and rough around the edges. The best thing are the parts around the HDMI connector. Looks like somebody used a flamethrower to reflow them. I thought this is an exception, but somebody on the forum has the same problem. So I think that is normal. Weird. The heart or system on a chip of the Raspberry Pi 2 is a BCM2836. The CPU speed is 4 times 900 MHz, which sounds better than the 2 times 1 GHz of the A20 SoC, which the orange and banana both use. This small performance test from Rust.tv shows the advantages of the Raspberry Pi 2 pretty good. With one thread, they are about the same, but with more and more tasks, the BCM2836 is a clear winner. But what about the GPU? The Mali 400 MP2 of the Banana and Orange is according to benchmarks as powerful as the Video Core 4 of the Raspberry. There isn't a big difference. All three use 1GB of RAM. While the Raspberry uses LPDD2, the other two use DDR3 memory, which has a faster frequency. They all have 40 pins as GPIO headers in one way or another. This way they can talk with the outside world. The A20 even has a small advantage because they have built-in ADCs, which makes them more like an Arduino than the Raspberry Pi. All of them have USB ports, obviously, but I think that 4 ports are mandatory nowadays. I hope everyone agrees on that. The Raspberry solved this issue with a LAN 9514 USB hub plus Ethernet IC. The orange as well with the help of a FE1.1S IC. But surprise, I tried using them with the official operating system from the developers and two of them won't work. That is a definite fail. And the banana has only two or three if you want to count the USB on the Go port, which the orange can also offer. Next is the networking. Like I just said, the Raspberry uses one IC for USB and Ethernet, which slows down the speed quite a bit. The other two use a dedicated IC just for the Ethernet, which results in a gigabit port, which offers a great speed boost in comparison. They would be a much better server. But not only that, they also throw in wireless LAN which is amazing. This way I don't need to spend 10 bucks on a small USB wireless LAN stick like this. Then we got some usual video outputs like HDMI and AV out, which every one of those three have. But the orange also throws in a VGA port, which is great for all the old school analog video lovers, I guess. It works with the Android image out of the box, but I had to do a little modification to get Raspbian running. Oh, and Android is only supported for the banana and orange for now. Next is the connector for the camera, which all three own. And of course, the still unused display connector of the Raspberry. The orange and banana have a more standard LVDS connector, which supports the LCDs that for example the Maker produces. Don't get me wrong, the Raspberry can already use those GPIO LCDs. 
but they are just not practical. I like this flexible ribbon cable much more because I can position my screen any way I want. And even though this LCD is made by Lee Maker, it also works with the Orange Pi. At the end we have the micro USB of the Raspberry which just powers the board. No switch, no nothing. The Orange and Banana also use a micro USB input, but they also use an AXP209 power management IC, which allows them to add power and reset switches. And it also allows them to do something really fantastic, at least for the Orange. You can actually hook up a 3.7V lithium ion battery and use it as your power source. But not only that, if you hook up 5V power while using the battery, it will actually get charged. Yes, there is a battery control circuit inside. That makes the Orange perfect for portable applications. Speaking of power, the Raspberry draws 211 milliamps, the Banana a tiny bit more with 220 milliamps, and the Orange is hungry with 310 milliamps while doing no particular task. Other features of the 2A20 boards are the SATA port to connect hard drives, an IR receiver to use remotes and a microphone which can for example visualize my hand claps on the matrix. That was the hardware, but the software and community is also super important nowadays. I think I don't have to say much about the Raspberry. Everything there is an A+. The Banana and the Maker also made huge improvements with their forum and overall support. It is pretty good. And the Orange. Oh the Orange. The wiki is pretty much a copy paste of the banana wiki and here they also use a picture of a banana pie. I don't want to be mean but for now it is quite horrible. But I hope it will change because every board has its pros and cons. The Raspberry Pi 2 might be the cheapest with 35 bucks but the other two with 50 and 55 dollars definitely have the right to exist. One solution is not the best for every problem. With that being said. Tell me what you think in the comments and what board should I use for the Matrix Part 3 video. As always, thanks for watching. I would be really happy if you subscribe. Don't forget to share and like this video. Stay creative and I will see you next time.